So now as we look at nutrition, what we're going to now focus on is how we maintain nutritional balance within the body. How do we make sure that the things that are going on with the body related to digestion, those things have to occur successfully and simultaneously. All of this has to be regulated. And the best way to regulate this is to utilize hormones. So we'll entitle the next flowchart, uh, Hormonal Regulation of Digestion. So in order for digestion to occur successfully, you need to have a hormonal influence over it. And that's what we'll be focusing on in this flowchart. This is summarized in figure 41.2, the topics that we'll be covering throughout this flowchart. Overall, what we need to first understand about hormonal regulation within digestion is the following. When you have the arrival of food, and that's the key word here, the arrival of food, the presence of food anywhere within the alimentary canal compartments, there are going to be reactions to this. The alimentary canal, remember, it's that one-way tube with the mouth and the anus. The arrival of food within the compartments, the organs that are found within this one-way tube, anytime food comes there, that's going to trigger stuff, trigger reactions. And those reactions are specifically going to be the following. The arrival of food in the alimentary canal compartments triggers two things, peristalsis, which is that one process we said was continuous throughout digestion, the pushing of food to the next compartment involuntarily by a smooth muscle, and also chemical digestion secretions. So things that will chemically digest the food that's arriving to the specific compartment, that's going to be regulated by hormones. Hormones will regulate the peristalsis that's happening, the chemical secretions that are happening. And in order for that to happen, we need to look at the different ways and different times at which food arrives to the specific alimentary canal compartments. So let's look at the first compartment, the oral cavity. You're already going to have a bit of a hormonal influence here. The oral cavity is going to directly result in the nervous system being triggered. The nervous system itself triggers saliva production, it sends a message to saliva, an efferent message to the saliva to produce an effect, and that is to produce salivary glands, I should say, to produce saliva. So saliva is going to be produced here. So we have saliva production, and this in turn directly causes the swallowing process which again is uh, somewhat voluntary, but majority involuntary to be triggered as well. So it encourages both of these. So that's what happens at the oral cavity in terms of regulation of digestion. So let's move on to the next part. The next major area of digestion, if we sort of exclude the pharynx and uh, esophagus, which are just, you know, hallways to the next part, the next part is the stomach. So if we look at the stomach, the stomach is going to be a very important and very much regulated part of digestion. This is going to happen whenever food enters the stomach, we'll see the following. So again, this is not constantly happening. The message in the stomach, the messages that happen in the stomach only happen as a result of the arrival of food. That's a key idea here. Only once food enters do we see the following hormonal effects. Let's take a look. Within the stomach, once food enters, the food arrival itself uh, it, naturally, you would imagine this, the food arrival stretches the stomach. The stomach expands. Remember we said it had elastic muscles, and that's purposeful. That food arrival causes the stretching of the stomach. Now, this in turn will cause some other reactions, and those, are the, these are, and those can be summarized as the following two events that occur, post-stretching of stomach, post-arrival of food. First, when we have this stomach stretching, this directly triggers the release of a hormone, and that is called gastrin. So gastrin, which is nicely named because it's occurring in this gastro area of the body, this is a digestive hormone that is only going to be released if food arrives and stretches the stomach. So gastrin as a hormone is a chemical message. It must have an effect. What's the effect? Well, first of all, it's a bit tropic because it actually begins within the bloodstream. So it comes from the bloodstream. That's where it originates and then travels tropically to the target, which is the stomach. From bloodstream to stomach. And stomach would be thus classified as the target tissue here. 
Now, once it's arrived at the stomach, the stomach itself would be considered in a stimulated state. So we'll write that down. The stomach is stimulated. What does that cause? Once the stomach has been stimulated, it will produce gastric juices at a high rate. Produces gastric juices. And as we know, gastric juices are important in the furthering of digestion, of breaking down material that has entered the stomach. So that's our first effect. The food arriving is going to stretch the stomach and cause gastrin to be go, go from the bloodstream to the stomach to produce overall, to have the stomach produce gastric juice. So let's remember, the stomach doesn't do this on its own. It doesn't just randomly produce gastric juice. It only produces it if gastrin tells it to, and gastrin only comes into the stomach if food comes into the stomach to stretch it. And overall, once you have food arrival within the stomach, this is going to then uh, subsequently cause as well the idea of churning. This triggers, once you have all this occur, this overall triggers churning. The stomach moving around, its muscles flexing. That's called stomach churning. This is the physical mixing and further, you know, breaking down of food. So it's a physical mixing of food. And the stomach is constantly doing this. And sometimes when you don't have any food there and the stomach is churning, you'll hear it. Your stomach will growl, right? So if there's no food there, that growling, that churning will happen and you'll actually hear it specifically. Now, though this is one of the major reasons why the stomach is, digest is uh, um, hormonally regulated, this arrival of food, it's also going to be sub-regulated by another uh, part of the body. It's also, we'll just mention this, it's also regulated by uh, so a part of the uh, nervous system that we looked at, the enteric division, and that's of the autonomic nervous system, ANS. Remember, the enteric division is just a part of this autonomic nervous system, mainly in charge of digestive qualities and capabilities. In the next video, what we'll be concluding our hormone, hormonal regulation is looking at what happens within the small intestines.